Yourself, what level will you be talking about? I'm going to talk about stage six, the ice stage, so to speak. This is uh, a bit of a difficulty spike, although stage five is tough as well. But it definitely uh, is within the... We're now in the second half of the game, and the second half of the game is pretty tough. Here, these penguins uh, stand on pedestals or sometimes on the uh, on platforms, and when you get close to them, they'll do a dash to the right. So if you hang too far to the right of the screen, then you're going to end up with like 10 penguins on screen at a time. Uh, so I generally just stay to the left and sort of try to trigger them right away. The first sort of segment of three challenges is based around giving up your balloons and just walking on the ice. So I think this is the first time you need to actually move forward without balloons at all in the game. That is to say that previously you could give up balloons, but those would be for optional challenges. Right, so you've been invited to do so before, but this is the first time you're forced to do so. And there are multiple screens that scroll by where you don't need balloons at all. So it's not just an instance of get through one thing and quickly refill. This is like you're really playing on foot here. How do you get into that bonus stage? If you just stand on the falling platform above the bumper and hold the jump button, you'll bounce straight up from the bumper and can move right a little bit to get to the bonus stage. And there are the balloons sort of leading up that kind of hint you in a very indirect way. Uh, so I don't have a strong encapsulation of the theme, but this level definitely puts a lot of emphasis on horizontal motion, and it sort of has a push-pull feel to it, where it's either emphasizing that you go forward or emphasizing that you hold back. So it sort of doesn't let you roll with the scrolling, essentially. Give me a moment where you were forced to go forward. Well, the uh, little penguin guys, they don't activate until you get close to them, so it's to your benefit to get close to them if you want to trigger them. You trigger them and then they get out of your way that much quicker. Yeah. You said also there were moments where you were forced to hold back, right? Yeah, so then there are jumps that you need to let the end point of the jump scroll into the screen before you can actually take off, otherwise you won't have anywhere to land. In addition to that, there are, whether you call them enemies or not, falling hazards. Uh, so those give you the vertical counterpoint to the uh, horizontally oriented enemies. There are snowflakes that fall, which are the same as the... What are the, what falls in stage two? Is it like uh, nuts or nuts, something? Nuts, I guess. And those follow the same pattern of if you're on, I think, the same tile as them, they will fall, or at least directly adjacent to it. Yeah, their falling is proximity-based and not on a timer like a thwomp, so... Just like the spikes and the nuts, you have to trigger the snowflake to fall down. That's interesting. You see those vertically falling things that you trigger throughout the game, but there's also the horizontally falling penguins that you trigger that only appear in this level. Yeah, and they also have a, a much different proximity, so for the penguins, I guess the penguins need some room to, uh, to get at you. If they didn't trigger until you were one tile away from them, then you'd be past them already. <laughs> yeah. A little later on, it gets tougher. There's this place where there are three snowflakes grouped together, and there's one balloon that's really close to the snowflakes and one that's really close to the water. And if you've gone over the previous platform with a penguin, then you're going to have to fall down pretty far to get the lower balloon. But the problem is, as soon as you trigger the snowflakes, they'll be falling with you, and they'll hit you as you go down. So, that's one where, if you planned in advance, 
and you know what's coming, you can go under the platform that has the penguin and come up. And that way you can usually cross between the snowflakes. What you can also do there is what I was saying before about triggering the snowflakes to fall and then following them down. But that's what it reminds me of what Daniel was saying in his level about more individually crafted challenges. That's kind of one of those. There's not a general strategy that would lead you to take that approach. It's just you have to learn the arrangement of the elements and figure out a way around them. Yeah, it's a, a very specific configuration there. So then you've got this floating ice flow or whatever you want to call it. Ice cube. <laughs> right. This is another segment where you want to get rid of your balloons. So you drop your balloons, you ride under these three platforms, and there will be a one-up down there if you do that. You don't have to. And it's actually pretty easy to just float above, but you won't get the one up and you'll probably miss the, the balloon in between. What will happen there is a pea balloon will spawn. The pea balloon is actually kind of tough to get. But if you do, the next segment is pretty straightforward. If you just fill up some balloons, you just crush a bunch of penguins and walruses and stuff like that, and it's no big deal. If not, it's uh, just a fairly tight balloon segment where you've got walruses keeping you off the ground and penguins, they're really in the middle of where you want to go. So this is where you really need to trigger them to get them out of your way. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck with no room to go up and no room to go down. So once again, it's giving you a tight corridor, but this time you have balloons versus previously when... You were stuck on your feet. There's a little S corridor, I sort of think of them as, towards the end, right before the second bonus stage. And essentially it's asking you to sacrifice your balloons so that you can make it through this short little path. And then you quickly have to refill your balloons to get to the, the next three. I'm not positive, but this might be the first time that there's one of these S corridors for balloons. I know previously it's been used for health, or I mean not health, uh, one ups. Yeah. Yeah. But you definitely need it to need to do it to get the perfect in this level. So you might say the level's punctuated by different times when you can fill up your balloons. It definitely alternates between the balloon segments and the foot segments. Okay. What is the boss like in this level? He's kind of tough. Uh, he's not as bad as the final boss, but I think the bosses are a pretty good ramp up in difficulty one to the next. So this guy's definitely a bit more challenging than the uh, pistol shrimp. So what he'll do is throw his pale hat at you and he sort of targets it at wherever you are and then seems to walk back and forth not quite sure what determines where he walks but anyway the trick here is that he can throw it straight up at you so if you hover out directly over him like with the other bosses he just is going to throw the pail up at you and kill you right away so you need to trick him into throwing it to the side but then he actually throws it pretty quickly, so while the pail is out, you need to get in close enough to hit him, because you can't hurt him while he's wearing it on his head. And if you're on the ground, I think it'll go over you. Is that true? If you're on the ground, then um, the snowman will throw its bucket at you, and it will aim it at the center of your hitbox. So, it, so it's not just uh, horizontal, but also it's more uh, diagonal. So it does go down and towards you. Are you able to jump over it and hit the boss while he does that? So I think that the difficulty there, it might be possible, but the reason that I never landed on that strategy is that because of the ice, it's hard to get enough X momentum to get a long jump in there. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. So it is a pretty frantic fight. You are really going between states pretty quickly refilling your balloons a lot 
So I guess it, uh, it's fitting for the level where you're also sort of going between states and refilling your balloons a lot. Yeah. Daniel, did you have any thoughts on this level? There is more spikes, which we saw in the whale level. There's a horizontal movement of the birds and the way they sandwich you, which we've seen in, in stage three. And we also have lower ceilings as well. And so in this level, more so than the previous levels, the player has less room to navigate in. And so it's a much more tighter level. And I think that because of that reason, the scroll speed is a lot slower in this level. Yeah. F yeah, 5 has that fast scroll speed again, but the clouds don't have spikes. It is refreshing to be back to a slower level. It's interesting how they slow that scroll speed to create variation and to facilitate particular types of level challenges. 